Hi, my name is Brent Monroe. I'm currently a fourth year orthopedic resident uh, at the University of Arizona, Phoenix. Okay, and what was it about orthopedics that got you interested in it? Well, just the, you know, first, firstly, I wanted to be a surgeon. So surgeon first, uh, I like the idea of if something's wrong, then surgical treat it, not waiting on medi medications to kick in, you know, checking every day, checking live, doing this. I like the idea of if you know what is wrong, you surgically intervene and get the problem taken care of. Uh, so that quick approach to problem solving with surgery, that was the main uh, drive for me. Uh, orthopedics, I like the idea, you break it, you fix it. Uh, it's just pretty straightforward. Uh, for a while I did general surgery. Uh, I had experience with one of my uh, mentor uh, had uh, uh, stomach cancer. Uh, it's essentially uh, had surgery, large uh, removal of the tumor mass. I uh, was in the ICU for weeks and weeks. I had to be taking care of him, and this was uh, uh, really this was very depressing for me. With orthopedics, uh, I mean, it's, for, the, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. You know what the pathology is. You know what the problem is. You just go in. You treat. You don't have to uh, wait. You don't have to. I mean, there's a small amount of cases where a patient has to go to the ICU, depending on how long the surgery was, or depending on how complicated it was. But for the most part, these patients are either going home the same day or maybe spending a day or two in the hospital. So I like the quick approach. Why I chose surgery and then ortho, uh, just the quick fix to the problem. Okay. In terms of education-wise, what does it take to become an orthopedic surgeon? Uh, so to become an orthopedic surgeon, first you have to uh, complete uh, your high school, uh, get a high school diploma. Then you have to apply for a college, uh, get accepted, complete four years of uh, college. Really, it doesn't matter what you uh, major in. You just have to make sure you ha you pass or cover the prerequisite for uh, medical school, which are usually the science subjects, uh, including English and uh, math. And also you have to take the MCATs. Uh, once you get an acceptable score that a medical uh, dean or admission committee uh, feels is a strong enough score, uh, then you, uh, in addition to your community service, again your uh, GPA, uh, you get accepted into medical school. Uh, after acceptance in medical school, which is uh, four year, uh, traditionally is four years, then you apply for residency. If your interest is in orthopedic surgery, then you apply for orthopedic uh, surgery residency. During your four years of medical school, you have to take part one and part two of the boards. Uh, in the past, part one was sufficient. Having a very good score in part one of the, of the medical boards was sufficient to get an orthopedic surgery. But because it's become so competitive, uh, now they're uh, looking at part two also. So a lot of uh, candidates uh, for orthopedic surgery take part one, part two, and you have to, orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, and I would say dermatology are traditionally the residency uh, programs that you have to have really strong scores, a lot of research experience, and strong letters of recommendation to get in. But those three components are really the big uh, three to get into uh, residency in orthopedic surgery, and in general, any residency at all. All right, can you describe a typical day for you uh, during your residency? So a typical day for me, currently I'm on the orthopedic spine surgery service. So a typical day for me, I have an intern. I'm a senior now on the service. so. Ortho, like I said or earlier, is a five-year program. Uh, usually, year one to three, you're considered a junior resident. Year four to five, you're considered chief resident. I'm currently a fourth year, as I said at the introduction, so I'm a, a senior or chief resident. Uh, on my service, you have uh, the attendant who's above me, but I also have a junior. The jun myself and the junior, we're responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the service with uh, if there's any major complication, that's when we bump it up to the attendant. So on a typical day, depending on how many patients we have uh, in the hospital, which are usually patients that we operated on, I will, uh, the day before, I will talk to the junior about what time we should meet. Uh, on a typical day, we meet at around 6 a.m. in the morning. Uh, we see the patients, again, depending on how many patients we split up between ourselves, we see, I try to see all the patients even if I'm not going to write the notes on all the patients. But uh, we typically, uh, after seeing all the patients, split up the notes. And usually uh, with three or four patients, you're done within half an hour. Then we have what's called fracture conference, which is 
where we go over all the the day before uh, traumas or consults that we get that's orthopedic specific. Uh, and we review those with our attendants in addition to cases that we completed the day before and cases that we are going to be doing that day. And so that starts typically around 6.30, goes for an hour or 50 minutes or so. Once that finishes, then on, on a Monday, Tuesday and a Wednesday, we have uh, OR, that's our OR days. On a Thursday and a Friday, that's our uh, clinic days. Again, it depends on which service you're on. This may vary, but for the current service that I'm on, spine service, that's how it's run from day-to-day uh, -day on a weekly basis. If we're going to the OR, then right after that fracture conference, we head to the OR, meet our patients in preoperative holding area. We have to mark on the patient exactly where we're going to operate. We also go over with the patient exactly what we're going to be doing. The patient has to sign a consent and uh, we verify uh, with the nurses that there's no orders that's needed to be placed in the computer or uh, you know all the little miscellaneous stuff are taken care of. Once that is done, the nurse will take the patient back to the operating room. Uh, we'll typically uh, go ahead of them and be there or we'll join them right after depending on if you have anything else to tie up like notes from the morning when we rounded early on the patients. And, and Essentially, once uh, the patient's in the OR and they're put to sleep by the anesthesiologist, then we get to operating, which is the fun part of the ortho. Uh, if it's a clinic day, then we, uh, after that fracture conference, we'll usually head right over to the clinic. And, um, for the most part, our clinic starts at 8, and so usually we have maybe 15 to 30 minutes uh, after the fracture conference to the time the clinic starts. So my junior and I, we typically will go grab a bite you know something for uh to just keep us through the clinic because a lot of times you don't get to if, especially if the clinic is very busy you don't get to a uh, chance to eat anything so we try to eat something in the morning uh that will usually keep us for uh, the most part throughout the day uh, if it's a clinic day uh usually goes uh from about general for spine uh, we usually for the simple cases we're usually done by you know 12 or 1 but for like complex deformity cases we can go up to like 8 or uh, 8 or 9 that, that that day so okay well, what kind of advice would you have for those interested in a, a career in medicine or even orthopedics so the advice that uh, I would give uh, to anyone that uh, interested is kind of like the advice that you know I, I I would give myself I would look back at my younger self and give uh, you know first you have to have a love for it because it's it's a it's not a easy road it's a it's a it's a tough road but it's an enjoyable one it's one that uh, looking in it may seem hard but you know we as human beings we have a, we have the capability we have we have the ability to adapt to whatever situations you're placed in so looking in it seems very hard but once you're in it once you're doing it uh, you will realize that it becomes uh, it becomes uh, it becomes doable and you know I've done it uh, multiple other people have done it and we're not geniuses so first and foremost I would say make sure you want to do it don't worry about how hard it is looking in or you know what other people uh, tell you that it, you know it, it will take a lot of time I, I agree it will it, it, it will uh, demand that you likely have to uh, forego some activities that your friends are gonna be going on on a weekly basis by that you wanna you want to do medicine uh, understand that your GPA plays a very important role and so it's important that you have a very good GPA it's important that you participate in community service. Those are big things that uh, that uh, uh, admission uh, committee members are looking at. And so in addition to that, you want to have strong letters of recommendation. But doing community service, doing well in your, in your classes, that usually builds rapport with professors and that by itself will lead to good letters. So if you focus on those two big things and just in general be a nice person, I think the letters will come. So have good letters, have a strong GPA, and have uh, a good MCAT. You have, sorry, I missed that. You have to take the MCAT, and you, and again, it's it, you ha you have to do well. Uh, it's it's becoming uh, there's a high demand in the medical field for doctors, and so they're opening more uh, facilities. But uh, I mean, a lot of these applicants are they're very smart. They're they're having good scores, so you want to be competitive too. So in a, in addition to that. You, 
as I said earlier, you want to have uh, community service. Again, you want to try to set yourself apart from the competition. So any little thing that you can do, then you should try to do it to set yourself apart because it is becoming so competitive. Next thing I would, uh, I would do is uh, if you can shadow a physician. That would, you know, reinforce to you if, do I really want to do medicine? You know, can I, can I, can I, can I tolerate being in the hospital? Can I tolerate, you know, seeing blood? Can I tolerate someone passing out and not, you know, passing out myself? You know, so, you know, shadowing or going to a, a office, just seeing what it takes uh, to, uh, to, to calm a, you know, a, a, a very frightened child or a very uh, disrespectful patient. You know, just seeing the qualities that it will take. Again, that will tell you if you have the temperament, if you have, if you have this, if you really have the desire to do that. And so it will help to reinforce, yeah, I really want to be a doctor or no, this is not for me. So, and, and in general too, again, it will help with letters of recommendation. So once you take care of the, your MCATs, once you take care of your community service, you have good GPA, you have good letters of recommendation, you have some uh, shadow in under your belt, then I think that sets you up for being a good candidate. Once you get into medical school, uh, then you really want to do well. And I give you the example, uh, example of what I mean by this. Uh, I had a friend who she got a full scholarship, a full ride going into medical school and she thought that was it, she's there. No, you still want to continue to do well and that friend by the time she uh, ended uh, the first year, she was kicked out. So she came into medical school with a full scholarship and by the end of that first year she was dismissed. Why? Because she thought she had made it, no need to continue that strong work ethic that she had built up. On the other hand, I had another friend who got into medical school after, after we had started and that's because she met someone who was connected with the medical school and who put in a word for her and she got in that way but at the end of the four years she graduated third in her class. Why? Because even though she got in, she barely got in, she decided that she was gonna she was not gonna be a charity case. She was gonna work her way and demonstrate that she should be there. And so she worked and she worked very hard and she was number three in our class. She got AOA and she got the residency of her choice. So it goes to show that even when you get to medical school, you still need to continue that strong, uh, that you need to be continue to be disciplined, have that strong work ethic, and continue to work hard to, uh, especially if you want to go into orthopedic surgery, like I said earlier, you need a good uh, board score. It's not only on part one, but because it's becoming so competitive, you need a strong board score in part two. In addition to that, uh, the time that you used to spend to do community service and all that, now you translate that to doing research. Uh, you know, you want to spend time doing research against trying to set yourself aside apart from the competition because it is becoming so competitive uh, in orthopedic surgery, neurosurgery, dermatology, and in general the surgical specialties and even the non-surgical. So you always want to try to set yourself apart from the competition and you do so by going the extra mile. You know, if, if, uh, if your friends study four hours, you put in six hours. If, 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 uh, if your friends are partying five times a week, you try to party three times a week. The, the whole point is, again, this may not necessarily translate to you doing better, but at least you're trying your best. You're doing everything you can to, uh, to, to uh, maintain that high quality uh, academic output, and that will set you up for academic uh, success, whether it's orthopedic surgery or any other discipline in medicine. Awesome. Thank you so much.